place in your dungeon cell. A bone, a bone, I'll pick with this sailor fell. Let him be shown at once to his dungeon cell. I have to tell why will he be thrown the doors of his dungeon cell? My pain and my distress. All right, mates. Oh, they're doing all right. Thank you very much. We're trying to concentrate here. Sorry, sir. I didn't know you were doing your sums. Sums? Do you hear that, Alison? Sums. No wonder I'm going grey. Seven years in this academic hothouse and he still calls them sums. Looking for punishment, aren't you, Bates? Every night this week, hasn't it been? No, oh, I'm up with the sets, taking them down after. But you'd rather be up there singing, eh? I would. They could do with a bit of help by the sound of it. Tenors are a bit thin this year, aren't they? We've managed 25 years without you, Bates. Amazing, though it may seem. Just ask the audience. Fact, is it? Capacity. All three nights. Now, hop it. Go oh, on with work to do. Oh, by the way, the head's wife wants to see you. She'll be on the back row. Yes, sir. See you at the party after it. Great, if we finish totting up the takings. Right. If you get into trouble, just give us a shout. Hop it! What you call stage struck, isn't he, sir? Uh, it's a pity as a half as good at maths, it'd be set for life. For oh, joy, your rapture unforeseen, the clouded sky is now serene. The God of Lady of our love has hung his ensign high up up the sky is all ablaze. Oh, with words and chains and sagging up, and if I find the maiden coy, then we'll burn the boat and decor his joy in twain. Captain of the bin of fall And a right good captain too And though before my fall I was captain of you all I'm a member of the crew And though before his fall He was captain of us all He's a member of the crew I shall marry with a wife In my humble rank of life And you my own are she I must wander to and fro But wherever I may go I shall never be untrue to thee But never No, never But never Well, hardly ever Hardly ever be untrue to thee. Then give three cheers and one cheer more for the former captain of the Pinnell Fall. Then give three cheers and one cheer more for the captain of the Pinnell Fall. For he loves little Buttercup, dear little Buttercup, though I could never tell why. But still he loves Buttercup, poor little Buttercup, sweet little of the sea and when I marry thee I'll be true to the devotion that my love it was. Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens Then goodbye to your sisters and your cousins and your aunts especially your cousins whom you reckon up by dozens and your aunts For he is an Englishman For he is a
Minister, Chairman of the Council, Mrs. Pimlet, school governors, friends, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We now come to the boring part of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it's a duty which gives me increasing pleasure every year, that of thanking the cast on your behalf for a wonderful night's entertainment. Yeah. As always, I'm here in two roles, as headmaster Ooh. and as producer. Yeah. First, as the skipper. <laughs> Looking around the stage tonight, I, I feel intensely proud in the knowledge that all these extremely talented people feel such an affection for their old school that they give so much time and energy to their old students' association and, in particular, to the Gilbert and Sullivan Society. As, as producer, I can only thank them most profoundly for all the really hard work they put in over the last few months. Always, it's difficult to pick out individuals for particular thanks, but uh, here goes. I, I don't think I've missed anyone out. If I have, there's a wet flannel available here in the wings. They can give me a wallet with it later. <laughs> Thank you, the ladies of the Parent Teachers Association, for having done a wonderful job with the refreshments. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, our special thanks to Mrs. Matthews for organizing the costumes. <laughs> this, year, this year, we decided not to hire, but to make all the costumes ourselves. Just how successful she's been, you can judge for yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and our, and our stage manager, we have, as Thanks. always, ever faithful, ever resourceful, Mr. Murch. You'll be in trouble I with your husband. Never, I can quote him verbatim. It says the same thing every year. Now then, Alison, be content. She's old enough to be his mother. It's down, Clive. It's after school hours. We're here as equals. How old are you? Eighteen, just. Old enough, then. For what? To have a sherry. It's not Christmas, is it? <laughs> no, but let's pretend it is. Head's going down well. Hmm. What you might call a captive audience. You're leaving next month, aren't you? After A-levels. Afraid so. Sorry. The head thinks the world of you, you know. Yes, I'm sorry, but, you know. What? You've got to grow up, haven't you? <laughs> when you get to my age, you call it growing old. <laughs> When does it change? From up to old, I mean. I consider myself a very lucky man. For as long as I have Rex here playing my young male leads, I feel I shall never grow old. He, he never does. He looks exactly the same now as he did as a lad of 16 when he first sang this part. How, old, how long ago was that, Rex? Yeah, I'd rather forget it too. <laughs> Anyway, suffice to say, I don't know what we do without him and his voice. Yeah. Now, now, what about my three beautiful girls? How old are your parents? About the stage? Yes. Well, they like playing with the idea. But it's not something to do around here, is it? For a living, I mean. <sighs> They're growing old. As opposed to up, I mean. <laughs> Well, I didn't have much chance of growing up. I was organised. It was all laid out before me. Sixth form, university, teaching. Like a stiff starch suit, ready for wearing. And what did you want to do? I wanted to write. To travel, and to write. Why didn't you, then? I met the head, and that was it. And in those days, that was it. You could write now. About what? 25 years at Roden Grammar. <laughs> I might one of these days tell all, as they say. So, no stage for the moment. What's it to be, then? I'm going to write. Weddings, funerals, amateur dramatics. Reporter, local rag. Marvellous! That means you'll be based at home. 
We're doing Yeoman next. It's our Silver Jubilee production. Clive, you'd make a wonderful Jack Point. And, and finally, to a man without whose enthusiasm and sheer Savoyardian expertise, this society would never, could never have existed. All our beloved Gilbert and Sullivan operas hinge on a, a central character, a clownish, puck-like creature, very often the symbol of inept bureaucracy, or, or simply a poor chaplain-esque victim of it. But as every producer knows, without a, a figure of real authority, athleticism, and humor, the, the show goes out of the window. Ours, all 25 years of them, have remained securely indoors, <laughs> thanks to a succession of brilliant performances by my old friend and colleague, Roland Matthews. <laughs> She's over there talking to Tuppies. Hey, they're sharing a sausage roll, one at each end. Well, I'd better get to her then before they meet in the middle. <laughs> Roland, what? just the man I want to see. Come over here and meet my bank manager. I thought he was the chairman of the council. She's both. How convenient. <laughs> Come over and meet him anyway. He thinks you're marvellous. What does he think of you? That's more to the point. Oh, she's pretty good herself. Yeah. Oh, it's too lovely. We'll have to keep you in the cupboard. <laughs> what a nice idea. He <laughs> was just saying, Roland, you're better than a pro. I meant it, too. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I think you must love it out there. Oh, I do. I wouldn't do it if I didn't. Ooh, it's an old show of Anya Love. You should have seen him taking us for English. Lawrence Olivia wasn't in it. Ah, well, you were always such a good audience. Like hell as like. <laughs> Drop in hell, as didn't we, oh, love? Not quite, I hope. <laughs> well, it's been nice meeting you. I'm glad oh, you enjoyed you. it. Look at the missus. Yes, she was over there. Oh, follow the glow. She's basking in the reflected glory. Then <laughs> <laughs> VDB. Don't throw laurels, please. Just signed checks. Do no good from me. They bounce from here to Pontypris. My Pontypris. For there lies the remains of my account. <laughs> That'll teach you to make cracks about me singing, you oh. cocky little bugger. I give up, I give up. You're smashing. Terrific. Thank you. Now you're talking. <laughs> In small doses. Cool. Oh. Right, Rex. Yes, delicate. Take care of him. Schoolboy opera stars. I eat him alive. <laughs> Seb, I'm wondering where you've got to. People to meet. Oh, yes. Evening, Bates. Is the catch the show? Just the finale. What do you think? Very good. Do you think the schools was better? Of course he did. Isn't it? Don't embarrass the boy. Embarrass Bates? Yeah, that's beyond even my capability. You were in good form tonight, sir. So very verbose. Both. Erudite, John. He means erudite. Do I? You better. Alison's looking for you, Bates. She's over by the chicken rolls. Oh, yeah. Beats me. Who does? Who are those two? <laughs> Bates and Alison Clay. <laughs> She's mine like a razor's edge. State skull going up to Cambridge. And young Bates. Has there. more real talent in his big toe than a thousand Alison Clays. Look, it was a marvellous set. Your best yet. I hope they appreciate it, that's all. Do they? They just don't realise what's involved. The effort it takes. 
It's like singing. You're either born with it or not. That's their attitude. And yours? Oh, I know different. I'm envious of you. You're very lucky. To have been born with it. No, to have the skill, the vision. <laughs> ah. Oh, don't be so damn touchy. We're all very lucky to have you. I'm tolerated, Glenda, tolerated. Thank God the gods said out on their divine curriculum and I'd be out of a job. What do you mean? It's a classical pursuit, obligatory. No good school's complete without it. Well, I used to enjoy it. Ah, but you shouldn't have, Glenda. Hmm. Education's not a thing to be enjoyed. It's toil, hmm? Glorious toil. All finished then, sir. Money's straight and the book's spent. The count is complete. Have a chicken roll. Oh, You're very full of yourself, Bates. Been at the headmaster's sherry again, have you? As a matter of fact, I have. I thought as much. That's meant for governors, you know, and VIPs. Well, he's not a governor. Yet. I'll leave you to him, Alison. He's giving me the creeps. Oh. Well, what do you want? Who? Oh. The skip's wife. Oh, wanted to know what my plans were after advance, what I was doing. And you told her? Yeah. After a sherry. After a sherry, I'd have told her anything. Well, what do you want to know from her? She's Dad's wife. She takes an interest in all his pupils. I bet, especially the sixth form boys. Well. She had a proposition to make. <laughs> for after I've left school. She wants me to play the lead in the next production. Silver Jubilee production, Yeoman of the Guard. <laughs> That's Jack Point, the best part Gilbert ever wrote. Quiet. Quiet, please. Quiet, quiet, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please. Fellow Savoyards, and I feel we are all Savoyards, regardless of rank, as the elder statesman of this society, I now call upon our chairman and musical director, Mr. Fenner Hawks, L R C M <laughs> to address you. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasant duty to present Mr. John Richardson, our esteemed producer, with the traditional token of our gratitude. In turn, it's his duty to assume the equally traditional aspect of utter surprise that I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Let the ceremony. <clears throat> Commence. Oh. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Thank you all very, very much once again. Now, again, by tradition, it is my duty to inform you of the title of our next production. As you know, we'll be celebrating our Silver Jubilee, and your committee and I have decided that so auspicious an occasion should be celebrated only by a production of the most auspicious of the Savoy operas, the Yeoman of the Guard. Oh. Many, many societies shy from attempting Yeoman. Not only is it musically demanding, but dramatically so as well. So much as to strain the resources of all but the most endowed company. Your committee and I feel, without any possible shadow of doubt, whatever, <laughs> that we are such a company. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen of the Roden Grammar School Old Students Association, Gilbert and Sullivan Society, gird your loins, lungs, and whatever else you choose to gird. <laughs> for in six months' time, on November the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 1973, we shall present the Merry Man and his Maid, the Yeoman of the Guard. <laughs>
right whatsoever. I had every right. Under what pretext? Under no pretext. As your wife, I have no need of a pretext. Oh, I see. You feel that gives you the right to make my decisions for me? The right to share in them. I demand that, at least. My God, I'm given a little else. I suppose I should feel flattered that uh, you even bothered to inform me after the event. Stop being so bloody melodramatic, John. This isn't a Gilbertian situation we're in now. Well, it's fast becoming one. Perhaps I might know in advance what I'm going to tell the boy. Tell him you'd like him to play the part, of course. Well, that's just it. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I wouldn't. You what? Well, don't be such a fool. He'd be marvellous. He's perfect, Carsey. Of course he would. He's ideal. Perfect jackpoint. Well? What about Roland Matthews? Oh, John, you must be joking. Must I? But he's over 50. He's 55. But points a young man's part. A, a lovesick, jest, agile, acrobatic. The piece hinges on his credibility. Oh, John, you can't be serious. I only wish I weren't. John, this is the Silver Jubilee production, and you suggest jeopardizing it for the sake of sentiment. A reward for faithful service. My God, it's an operatic society we're running, not a branch of the British Legion. You settle for that job, then, with the paper? What do you mean? Come on, Clive, give me a flipping straight answer for once. Yes. I think so. You think so? And what about your acting? I've told you, I'm doing Jack Point. Look, stop it. Stop avoiding me, running away, hiding like a baby. I'm asking you grown-up questions. Give me some grown-up answers. What about the stage? Well, Roland just hasn't got the voice. You must know that. Of course I do. But I also know Roland Matthews. He, he lives for the society. It's his whole life. You make him sound even more pathetic than he is. All right, he's a mediocre English master with a second-class degree. We're all mediocre, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Well, some are more mediocre than most. And some try to salvage something from their mediocrity. Roland Matthews has. Just twice a year, he's up there, someone to be reckoned with, cut above the rest. A reward, you say? Yeah, he deserves a reward. First bloody prize for effort. Well, are you going to have a go professionally or aren't you? Of course I'm going to have a go. When? Well, give me a chance, will you? I have bags of time. Who knows what'll happen? I know damn well what'll happen. Me out of sight and sound at university. You'll play your part and be brilliant. Toast of Roden. You'll have your cosy little job and a bit of money coming in every week. Nights with the lads. Cock of the ruddy midden in no time. And up to your flipping neck in it. Part of the bloody landscape. My mum and dad, they're nervous about it. Clive, they're middle-aged. You're all they've got and you're nice to have around. But you've got something, something special. You can't ignore it. If you don't try, you'll be miserable all your life. If they just get a bit of experience first with the old oh, boy. Oh, experience, don't kid yourself. I don't know. Honest, I don't. Skip's wife, she was delighted. Well, of course she damn well was. She's ploughing you back into the land. She'll dig in her roots and suck you dry. Don't you see? Her, your parents, even the skip. They're all has-beens who've never been. To them, you're a great new energy source. Well, cut them off and let them die. Sod the skip's wife. Who do you want to kiss, her or me? Jack Point. Please. Oh, I was beginning to think it would never happen. You know, Helen, I just can't imagine a life without that music. I'll never forget sitting at my granddad's feet on Sundays after chapel, snug between his polished, full-nosed shoes and drifting on a cloud of St. Bruno. He'd lie back in his chair, close his eyes and sing... 
Take a pair of sparkling eyes hidden ever and anon in a merciful eclipse. Uh, I suppose it's like that for everyone, this music. Nostalgic, it's, it's so unpretentious it hurts. You were very good tonight. Was I? Not getting past it, am I? Oh, that'll be the day. <laughs> You'll tell me when I am, won't you? I'd rather die first. How about a nightcap? Act two, the same, by moonlight. John, have you ever wanted to be anything else? How do you mean? Other than what you, what you are. To do anything beside teach. No. No, I don't believe I have. How nice for you. You said in your speech on the stage tonight... Now, you caught some of it, did you? The part that mattered. Which part was that? You said you were proud of all those people who'd returned, who felt loyal enough to their old school to come back for you and sing for you in the operas. Yeah. Well? I just wondered if it was healthy, that's all. Well, my pride or their loyalty? Both. Well, I did feel proud and comforted and, and grateful. It is gratifying to be able to witness the fruits of one's labor. But is it desirable? What do you mean? Don't you feel that to hear their tales of distant triumphs would be even more gratifying? Well, I like both. But we can't all be pioneers. It's the sad truth that for most of us there comes a time when Life stops and turns back on itself. Happened to us when we first came here 25 years ago. With Birch and Russell, it never happened. But with those on the stage tonight, it, it came when they left the school. Admission of failure, don't you think? On their part? There are ours. Shouldn't we have been able to give them something more? Possibly. But it's happened. And now they return for warmth and succor. Who am I to turn them away? Especially as the suckers are reciprocal. And convenient. And harmless. What are you going to do about it, then? So what are you going to do about it? About what? About what? About the job. About the part. I don't know. I think about it for a few weeks. Let the dust settle and... and let the committee decide. Now, ladies and gentlemen, have I your permission to sign the minutes of the previous meeting as read? As we're pressed for time yes. and we've rather a heavy agenda to get through, thank you. First, apologies for absence from Roland Matthews. It appears to be enrollment night at his evening class and he's forced to attend. He phoned me this morning. Is he teaching or being taught? I don't know. Oh, well, that's a good straight answer. Yes, well, I thought we'd get the meeting off on the right foot. I like a man who speaks his mind. Yeah, they are. You don't come across him these days. You don't. Not many honest men about. Definite scarcity, I would say. A rare bird. We're very lucky. We are. I'd like to propose a vote of thanks to our chairman for starting the evening proceedings on such a forthright and honest footing. I <laughs> second that. Mm. All those in favour say aye. 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 Carried unanimously, thank you very much. <laughs> right, number one on the agenda, costumes. No comment? Yes, we must hire next time. Yes, we must. 
afraid so. Oh, come on. Under the circumstances, Mrs. Matthews did a good job. Yes, and under the circumstances, I looked like a cross between a Yankee footballer and Napoleon. <laughs> Which bit was the footballer? Shoulder. Napoleon. <laughs> the sex appeal. Oh, I like it. I like it. You're telling me. <laughs> You're getting all this down, Glenda? Oh, through the chair, please. Through the chair. Now, that's a novel idea. <laughs> <laughs> Setting the personal vanity of individual members of the cast aside, mm -hmm. we did save 200 pounds. By not hiring? Yep. Well, that's a lot of money. Mm, it is. I still looked like Napoleon. Playing quarterback. You sang like a quarterback. Playing Napoleon. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Donald, you're the artist. What did you think of the costumes? Well, on what level am I to judge? The aesthetic or the expedient? Preferably both. Economically, of course, they were obviously excellent, if, if the figure is to be believed. It's correct. Arrived at systematically, logically, not emotionally. Aesthetically, they were disastrous. Makeshift, piecemeal, inaccurate, in a word, tatty. I think you're all bloody ungrateful. Hmm. Nevertheless, they were tatty. And what if they were? We're not professionals. Mrs. Matthews worked damn hard on those costumes. A damn sight harder than some I could mention. Well, I was asked for an opinion. Well, you've given it, so shut up. I am not going to sit here let her oh, shut order, up. Order, Glenda, order. Now, she's a right to put a motty in. Order, yeah. please. Three pints of it. <laughs> pint of mild. A glass of lager, and what's yours, Glenda? Oh, shut up, Ross. <laughs> sit down, Red. Ladies and gentlemen, we've a lot to get through. <clears throat> Mr. Richardson, as producer, what do you think? Well, I think as regards our next production, the decision's made for us. The costumes for yeomen are much too difficult to be made domestically. We, we must hire. Yeah, yeah. But I think our thanks should go on record to Mrs. Matthews and her helpers for the wonderful job she did in dressing pinafore. Mm -hmm. I propose. I second. Hypocrite. Who the hell is she calling a hypocrite? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. Those in favor. Carried unanimously. Right, so now the next production points are rising. Mr. Earl? A point certainly has arisen. A very sticky point. I have a casting problem. Not normally, as you know, I wouldn't dream of taking up the committee's valuable time with a matter of this nature, but the particular predicament I find myself in at the moment leaves me with no real alternative. Apart from that, I personally would value your advice. A decision has to be made about Jack Point. As you know, the show virtually hinges on a part. Yes, what about it? We have to decide who is going to play it. Oh, a private buffoon is a light-hearted loon if you listen to popular rumor. He's so joyous and bright from the morn till the night and he bubbles with wit and good humor. He's so quaint and so terse, both in prose and in verse, yet though people forgive this transgression, there are one or two rules. That old family fools must observe it, they love their profession. There are one or two rules, half a dozen maybe, that old family fools of whatever degree must observe if they love their profession. If your master is surly from getting up early and tempers are short in the morning, an inopportune joke is enough to provoke him to give you at once a month's warning, then if your refrain is at you again, for he likes to get value for money, he will ask then and there with an insolent stare. If you know that you're paid to be funny. Oh, it adds to the task of a merry man's place when his principal asked with a scowl on his face. If you know that you're paid to be funny. Though your head it may rack with a bilious attack and your senses with toothache you're losing. Don't be mopey or flat, they don't find you for that if you're properly quaint and amusing. Though your wife ran away with a soldier that day and took with her your trifle of money. Bless your heart, they don't mind. They're exceedingly kind. They don't blame you so long as you're funny. It's a comfort to feel if your partner should flit. Though you suffer a deal, they don't mind it a bit. They don't blame you so long as you're funny. Young Bates has been telling his friends he's been offered the part. Says he's been told he is tailor-made for it. Yes, too. Has he been offered the part? Uh, not by me, no. By whom, then? Indirectly, by my wife. <clears throat> She's long been a fan of the boys, as indeed we all have. In performance, at least. Only, not at least. Well, in the school productions, he's proved himself to be an extremely talented young man. My wife assesses him even higher. She feels he's potentially of professional caliber. That's for sure. 
it, it appears to me that that is not the question, without wishing to be disrespectful. Of course not. Uh, may I ask on what authority Mrs. Richardson has taken it upon herself to dispense the rules in our next production? None. She had no authority. I, I, I told her so. Has she mentioned any other parts to anyone? No. Though, to be fair to her, she didn't actually offer point debates. She merely suggested to him that he'd be ideal for the part. That'd be enough for Bates. Exactly. Well, I'm worried about Roland. Hearing the rumor about Bates playing the part. Well, that's what we have to decide. What? If it is just a rumor. My God, you wouldn't do it. I'm asking the committee. There's damn well nothing to ask. That man has given his life to this school and to the society. He lives for the operas. Oh, come off it, Glenda. Have you ever been to his home? Seen what it means to him? It's steeped in GNS. Pictures on the wall, programs, scores sky high, records. Oh, come on. We all know what Roland's like. Oh, Glenda. you do, do you? That man found my voice when I was 14, coaxed it from me, gave it air, opened a whole new world to me. He's played more bloody parts than the whole of this bloody committee put together ten times over and ten times better. How dare you suggest he should be replaced? Nobody's suggesting anything, Glenn. Of course you damn well are. You're suggesting that a schoolboy should be shipped in to play a part that Roland Matthews has been waiting all his life to play. Well, you can all go to hell. If Roland's out, then so am I. Uh, it seems to me that, however emotionally involved some of us may be, the question we have to decide is who, for the good of the production and ultimately the health of the society, would best play the part. I agree with Mr. Thornberry. Mm -hmm. we, we want the best show we can get. The society is bigger than any individual. Uh, the society is individuals. We're all individuals. Mr. Richardson here asked me specifically to call this meeting tonight because he knew that Roland would not be able to attend. He hoped that we would be able to discuss the matter sensibly, rationally, and compassionately. As with Roland, music's been my life. Had I had my wish as a young man, it would have been my whole life, my profession. But as our treasurer, Mr. Faulkner here, so often points out, we live in a world where bills have to be paid, and like most of us, I had to settle for less. What I'm trying to say is this. We're all members of this society, singers, musicians, helpers, stage staff, because we love not only the Gilbert and Sullivan operas, but because we love them doing them together, each doing his bit collectively to produce the most beautiful sound, the gayest spectacle, the happiest event for audience and performers alike that's within the bounds of our capability. In that, I believe we each individually achieve the greatest satisfaction. Mr. Richardson, in your opinion, who is best suited to play the part of Jack Point? Well, simply on a matter of age. Five baits. Then I suggest that the young man is officially offered the part. Have I a proposer? Seconder? All those in favor? Those against, carry by a majority of six to two. And who's going to carry the good news to Roland? I will, if he hasn't already guessed. He hasn't. He was telling me this morning how excited he was. Any other business? Mm. Yes, tenors. <laughs> we were very thin in Pinafore. Can I ask you to keep your ears pricked for any likely recruits? Anybody, not just past student. Anybody? We're really desperate. Right, you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other business? Right, I declare the meeting closed. As this is the last before we begin on yeoman at the end of August, uh, have a nice holiday, everyone. And you, family. Matt? Give us a lift. Oh, look. Take it. Take it. Have a good holiday. Good night. Have a beer. Do you want to lift on, Glenn? No, thanks. I'd rather walk. Can you spare me, Sir Rex? In my room. Well, you? You're an incurable romantic, Linda. Am I? Why did you vote for Roland? Oh, no. I'm a luxury like him. 
professionally and socially. If I ceased to be of use, if some mini Michelangelo should emerge from the gloom of the remove, I'd be the next to go. Only unlike Roland, I'll have beaten them to it. What do you mean? After deeds seen done tonight, they can stick their yeoman. Donald has painted his last boat colours. We're going to be short of men this year, Rex. Yeoman's very heavy on men. You know any likely lads? I'll keep my ears open, I. What about the old boys? What about them? Well, you're the captain, aren't you? Lean on them. The rugger lads. Rugger lads. Make a fine bunch of yeomen, that pack of yours. Can they sing? Not your kind of song, they can't, no. Well, you can. I've run by me, aren't I? I'm doing well, the club. Oh, marvellous, yeah. We're only three teams now, you know, under Colts, booming. Bit difficult, isn't it? Only one pitch. Oh, well, the third and the Colts always play away. We're looking round, though. School pinch? But what about the council? It was them chucked us off in the first place. Oh, councils are all bent these days. Don't you read the papers? You find me the singers. I'll find you the pitch. How many do you want? As many as you can muster. Let's see, we finish A-levels next Thursday, sports day the next week, break up the week after that, July the 20th. How about the following Monday, the 23rd, in the hall, 8 o'clock? Well, it's close season, but I can ring round. That'll do, I. Oh, sorry, am I passing in? No, I'm just finished. Oh, how's the family, Rex? Fine. How many have you got now? Three, two girls and a boy. Oh, my God, you make me feel old. Oh, you don't look it. Oh, no wonder you were head boy. John always picked the charmers. <laughs> right, well, I'll see you on the 23rd. And you just want singers. You provide the bodies, we'll pick the carousers. <laughs> Aye. No. Please. Well? It's Bates. They chose young Bates. Please? I am, and I'm not. I've got to tell Matthews he's got the chop. Where are you going for your holidays, Roland? The lakes, Little Langdale. My God, you're spreading your wings, aren't you? It's been ample side the last ten years, hasn't it? Now you're moving two whole valleys. Who put you onto that, Thomas Cooks? Recommended. <laughs> we felt like a change anyway. It's as good as a rest. It is. We're trying Brittany this year, going down in the van. First time the kids have ever been abroad. They've been to Wales, haven't they? Yes, they've been to Wales. Same race, really. Celts, Brittany, South Wales, Cornwall, Coast of Ireland, all the same stock. Washed up by the tide, eh? Flotsam. It's a good job I'm a gentleman, or I'd tell you two English bastards what to do with your bloody country. Sod it. Yeah, yeah. Smudged it. <laughs> no, I just give him one A. Williams, an excellent for Latin. Is he? No, he's bloody hopeless. He's one of these lucky lads with no academic future. He'll end up making a fortune selling firewood. <laughs> What kind of plaint have I? Who perish in July? Who perish Cheer in up, July? Cheer up, Roland. What's all about this about perishing? And in July as well. We break up today, man. Seven long, lazy weeks with nothing to do and no money to do it with. And you're singing about perishing. What's the matter? I had a premonition or something? <laughs> it's from the yeoman. We've been playing it over. The recording, getting the feel of it. Oh, oh I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> Where's a life a boon? If so, it must. Oh, we're taking a couple of weeks down south to see a few shows. Doily cart. Pick up a few hints. Come. On. Just popped in to say goodbye. Oh yes, uh, Bates. You're leaving today, aren't you? Yes, sir. Sorry about the math, sir. Thanks for trying. Well, that's all right, Bates. The awesome world of logic will trundle along without you. Goodbye, sir. When in Rome, talk like the Romans do, eh? The Italian. Yes, point taken. Goodbye, Clive. Best of luck. Goodbye, Mr. James. Cheerio, Mr. Matthews. Bye, Bates. Don't forget to pop in and see us and keep up the singing. Oh, I am. I'm going Any to play. time you need a bit of advice, we'll be here. Feel free. Cheerio. Goodbye. What's he going to do with himself? Local rag, a reporter, I believe. Oh, no, what a waste. What a terrible waste. He's a very talented boy. You 
You haven't told him? Well, not yet, no. I haven't got round to it. You haven't got round to it? The man's making a bloody fool of himself in front of half the staff room out there, and you say you haven't got round to it. What about Bates? Have you told him? I've mentioned it to him, yeah. He's just popped in to say goodbye. They were face to face. If it hadn't been for me, he'd have destroyed all Matthews. Has he gone now? Oh. Bates. Yes. Thank God for that. Oh, don't thank God, thank me. You took it upon yourself. Uh, to tell him. Yes, yeah, I know. And I will. In my own time. It's just that. Well? I don't much relish the job, that's all. My name is Basil. I'm married to a boy called Bond. We have a happy union. They call us Basil and Bond. And we're all queers together. Excuse us while we go upstairs. Yes, we're all queers together. And that's why we go around in chairs. No good. No good. Oh, perhaps if they try it a bit higher. No, it's hopeless. But the pitch? No. Yeah. Bargain's a bargain. You can have the pitch. As long as you don't let them sing on it. Give a few minutes yet. Yeah, I know. What time do you get there? Around five. I have to change up team times. Sad. Well, of course I'm sad. Once I get on the train, that's it. The end of the first quarter of my life. You're only going off to Cambridge, for God's sake. Come on, you talk as if you weren't coming back. I'm not. Not this Alice in any road. I was reading the other day, in one of the Sundays, that Joan Bakewell, she went up to Cambridge with her northern voice, said she felt like a hick. So she went in the lab and came out talking posh. I'm well, not that daft. So I'm not stupid either. Something will happen to me down there. I don't know how I'll change, but I will. Why? Why the hell should you? Because I'm not yet ready for mothballs. Come in, sit down. I'll get Helen to pop the kettle on. It's John Pitt. Pop the kettle on, will you? Oh, I could do with a cup of tea myself. She's got me mowing the lawn again. <laughs> First sign of a daisy, and she packs me off to chop its head off. <laughs> She's a funny woman, Helen. Gets all steamed up about battery farming, runs bazaars for day-old chicks, but day-old daisies, <laughs> no trouble at all. <laughs> Dual morality is a common failing. Uh, do good as they're all the same. They all pick and choose what to shout about. What are you shouting about? We're talking about lawn mowing. Oh, don't talk to him about lawn mowing. He'd be happy with the Rossendale Forest out there. <coughs> the Rossendale Forest is a range of hills. Yes, I know. That's what I mean. When you finish the mowing, you can give it a roll. <laughs> For 35 years, I've been taking her on, and I always lead with my chin. Do you know what I wish, Clive? What? I wish I could leave one foot behind, steady, till I'm sure of the next step. But I can't. And I'm glad I can't. we will make a fraud of the old adventure. Look at the town, Clive. It's been good to us, hasn't it? We've had some fun in those streets. There's the old bottle works yard where we had the giant bonfire. And the firemen came and we booed them off. <laughs> Do you remember you walked me home down Beckett's Cut and you touched my breast and I thought the end of the world had come? Those memories, they're good, solid memories. That's all they are. And am I really going to leave you behind? Three months, it'll flash past. It's Christmas in no time. Oh. 
Seven, seven, seven. You think they're well survived on a diet of Gilbert and Blinking Sullivan? Uh, it could do worse. Here, up, Helen. It might have been pigeons. Yes, it's less messy and it's kept him off the drink. Oh, well, Methodist Sunday school did have nothing to do with my singing. That <laughs> drove me to drink instead. <laughs> See what I mean? Well, I'll leave you to lay about to it. I've got work to do. You should join Women's Lib. <laughs> I'm 30 years too late, and I would. Yes, you would too. You know, John, we're very lucky, you and I. Our wives. Oh, life would be pretty boring without Helen. Well, John, what can I do for you? Well, Roland, I want to talk to you about yeoman. at all, but you're all enjoying it too much. We've had our fun over the past month, but now the principals are here with three weeks to go, and we're here to work. If we don't get it right now, we never will. We'll fall into bad habits, <clears throat> won't we, Mr. Barker? <laughs> but now we are all together. I thought for pipe openers we'd go from the middle of uh, page 178. Uh, uh, one, one, 176, that's just the after your prayer. Will you have a look at it now while I have a word with water? Um, try to remind yourselves of the exact structure of the score. We'll come to interpretation later. Thanks. So, uh, what happened to the boycott, huh? Got at you, did they? Did a Watergate? Dug up some secrets out of your past? They rely on me. There's no one else. Skip came to see me. Ah, uh, rob him of his soprano and he's capable of anything. You're a fine one to talk. I hear you've had the brushes out again. Your moral protest didn't last long. Hot air's my natural medium, Glenda. Hadn't you noticed? It's wonderfully fluid. Minimum responsibility with the maximum satisfaction. Sounds like a new kind of birth control. <laughs> this is your big chance, Batesy. I'm putting you in a strike and I'll get yourself warmed up. Ready to go, are you? Never better. I in this bit. Oh, well, I. Point solo. Christ, it's a dying bit and all. Baptism of bloody fire, eh? Well, what's up with you? You're not nervous, are you? <laughs> what have I got to be nervous about? Have a nice holiday. Oh, memorable. Went in the van to France, Brittany. One of these camping sites. Oh, lovely. Marvellous. Kids got dysentery after two days, me after three. What about Betsy? Oh, right as bloody rain. Constitution like a turnip, that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll <clears throat> have a muddle through. Remember, remember the plot. Leonard whom Elsie loves, is now Fairfax, but Elsie doesn't know it. Then Leonard reveals himself to her oh, as hey. Fairfax, <laughs> and they rejoice, and Jack Point enters heartbroken and dying. Oh. <coughs> All right, Elsie? Yeah. And um, that's, that's bar, bar 9, uh, 178. <coughs> 176. And uh, Fairfax, remember, yeah. handsomely dressed, attended by other handsome gentlemen. <laughs> I'll take some casket. Oh. <laughs> and uh, stand by Jack Point. All right, Walter, thank you. <laughs> Happiness, my soul is 
was glum, who sift no sop and who craved no crumb as he sighed for the love of a lady. I want you to know this has nothing to do with me. As far as I was concerned, you were to play the part. The committee wanted you. They sanctioned your casting. It was cut and dried. I can't understand what's happened. I'm just as upset and angry as you are. Bates! Don't be such a spoilt child. You've got to be adult about this. It's a blow, I know. You'd set your heart on the part. But he told me that he wanted... That he had you in mind for the part. I know. And so did I. I still feel you're the right choice. But it's Matthews out there. Yes, it's Mr. Matthews out there singing. As he's done brilliantly for more years than you've lived, my lad, and don't you forget it. <laughs> Clive, you've to decide calmly, pushing all your bitterness and disappointment aside. Do you want to sing with us or not? For if you walk out now, there'll be no coming back. They'll never forgive you. And they need you. We all need you. Without you, I can't conceive a future for them or for the society. I mean it. You have a very special talent. You hear that? <laughs> That's a swan song you're listening to. Next year, let's make it a debut, shall we? A triumphant one? OK. Now, you go in there and help the tenors out. You said yourself they were getting a bit thin this year. All right. I'd like to speak to him for a moment. How are the tickets going? Fine. Nearly sold out, Saturday. Marvellous. But don't forget our four. Before you start, I know it's hard on the boy, bitterly hard. Must be very bad about it. But I just couldn't find it in myself to tell Roland. I tried. I had every intention. Even this evening, I had every intention. You're a despicable coward. I know. I know, I know. I know what you think. How it looks to you. To all of them out there, but... 
I was the one who had it to do. And when the crunch came, I hadn't the resources. Nothing can change that. It's happened, the decision's been made, that's all there is to it. Roland sings point and Bates sings chorus. He's young, he'd get over it. He'd have his chance. Roland Matthews might well have been destroyed. You know something, John? For the 25 years we've festered in this godforsaken hole, in this godforsaken school with these godforsaken people, I've had one crumb of comfort to cling to, one single note of moral sustenance on which to justify our existence, that you actually belonged here. That I ever stupefyingly boring and stultifyingly tedious and eternally fossilizing it was to me, you actually found fulfillment here as king of this corny little castle. I thought you were content. I now find I was wrong. You simply hadn't the guts to grab for anything more. I'd better get back. There are a few people coming back for coffee. I'll need to get it ready. Sib. Clive Bates. He's a lot to do with his life. Plenty to give. Let him go. Let him get on with it. Faulkner, can I borrow Rachel for a second? Certainly. Can you pop in the hall and ask Mr. Matthews if I can have a word with him? Thank you. You wanted to see me, John? Yes, come in, Roland. Sit down. You don't. No, 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 thanks, no. Roland, there's been some controversy within the society about you playing point. I want to tell you about it myself before the old scandal machine gets rolling. There was a lobby for young Bates to play the part. Quite a powerful lobby. He's a very talented boy. Yeah, I think so too, but quite ready to take on point. He's young. It's really a young man's part. You're too young. It is our Silver Jubilee production. We needed your experience. No, it, it's just that next year you feel he deserves a chance. Yes, I understand that. And how long has this been going on, this debate into the state of my preservation? Since Pinafore. And you chose not to involve me? But the decision didn't involve you or Bates. I see. You know, John, after 25 years, it hurts to be emotionally classed with a schoolboy. You did prefer me, John, to Bates. I should hate to be patronized on stage as well as off it. I preferred you. You know, John, Helen swore she'd rather die before she told me. What's going on there, Roland? Piper's 10 Downing Street over there. Cabinet decisions. Everything all right, then? Fine. What did a pump? 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 What did a pump?
Just oh, say, okay. very fine achievement, 25 years, you must very proud. Oh, we are indeed. Well, Roland's all right, I've enough fun remembering my own lines without worrying about him. Don't worry about Roland, he was acting parts when you were twinkling your dad's eye. I didn't know my dad, never had a twinkle in his eye in his life. Boozy glaze, more like. He must feel it, mustn't he? The last time, after 25 years. He's had a good knock. He's got a good part for it. He drops dead at the bloody end, doesn't he? Oh, my, my God. Think of the state of us after 25 years. Wonderful set, Donal. Never cease to amaze me. There's a tins of school paint. <laughs> Glad you like it. When the show's over, I'll sign it and have it framed. You can hang it in your study. Nervous? Me? No, that's one thing about having a superiority complex. I'm convinced I'm doing them a favor. How's Roland? Just the same. Just subdued. Helen said he's fine, man. Oh, sad night. <laughs> oh, he'll be all right. He'll do it in his sleep. Come on. And I thought, if we were to sell our place, say, just after Christmas, or around spring, then we could move into the bungalow just in time for the season starting. The Isle of Wight's still very popular. I could take in guests, and you could easily get a little teaching job. Look up, love. No, right up. I don't want to poke your eye out. Molly's keeping her eye open for a place. She wrote last week. My God, Roland, you look a bugger in that hat. Just like Mr. Punch. <laughs> hey, put a peg on your nose and squeak. We could go into business. Make a fortune on Blackpool Prom. Best of luck, my old mate. Go on, Ellie. Eh? Cheer up, boy. It's a comic opera you're in. Not bloody Aida. You're as bad as Roland. He's on a trip or something over there, transported. I just feel a bit sort of out of it, that's all. Well, it's only natural. You're growing up, boy. <laughs> you and me. Master Pivot, two months ago, and now look at us. <laughs> Teach me a thing or two about this lark, eh? If I had the chance. Oh, you'll get your chance, boy. A pal of mine back home waited seven whole years to play for Wales. He got his chance in the end. Played well, did he? Terrible man. Made an absolute bloody fool of himself. He never got picked again. There's a moral there, Bates boy. If at first you don't succeed, give up. And he's won 50p single. X24, it's just been returned. Best to book in advance, you know, so the Jubilee. You're very lucky. And remember that when we come to our 50. Uh, somebody else in my job then, thank God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, pop it in the tin, Rachel. We'll tot it all up when the heat's off. Doily can't never have this trouble down at the Savoy. Bet their dick is fit and all. <sighs> yeah, I couldn't get a word out of him. He gave me the creeps. Especially in that art. Oh, young Bates is the same. He's sitting down there, face as long as a donkey's tool. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I thought we were supposed to be doing this for fun, or have I got it wrong? With a voice like yours, you better have not Oh, we can't all be castrati. <laughs> You are. Boy singers in Rome had their balls chopped off. <laughs> if you stay up here much longer, you'll be joining them. I bet, a bad boy. Oh. 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 God, they take it too serious, Roland and Bates. They want to grow up. A pair of them. They do. They like for a couple of kids. Oh. Ah! <laughs>
Massive rock, unmoved by sentimental shock.
It is sung to the moon by a love lone loon who fled from the mocking throng. Oh, it's the song of a merry man moping mum whose soul was sad and whose glance was glum, who sipped no sup and who craved no crumb as he sighed for the love of a lady. It's a song. 